Iwo Jima, April 14, 1945. My memories of August 14, 1945 are very clear. I flew P-51s from Iwo Jima over Japan during World War II as a 21-year-old captain and flight leader. On August 6, I returned from a mission when Lieutenant Phil Marr jumped on my wing and shouted, We dropped one bomb and wiped out a city. It's over. There was a sense of relief in the entire squadron. No more eight-hour missions. No more guys being killed. We had survived. Our motto, back alive in 45, seemed to have been fulfilled. But it wasn't to be. A notice was posted in the ready room on August 13th with our assignments for the next day's mission for all to read. The briefing would start at 1600 hours. Major Jim Tapp, squadron commander, stood in front of the map of Japan and started to talk. Why another mission was called out from the gathering of pilots. Tapp responded, we have to keep them honest. We will take off at 0800, but I doubt we will reach the target before the war is called off. If you hear the code word Ohio, we will abort the mission and return to Hot Rocks, which was the code name for Iwo Jima. I was scheduled to leave Blue Flight. Phil Schlomberg, a 19-year-old pilot from Brooklyn, New York, was to be my wingman. Schlomberg, sitting next to me, leaned over and said, Captain, if I go, I won't come back. Startled, I said, why? Just a feeling I have, Phil responded. When the briefing ended, I approached Tap and told him what Schlomberg told me and asked if there was a replacement. There isn't anyone to take his place, Jerry. Doc Lewis can get him off if there is a medical reason. And Schlomberg agrees, Tap replied. When I asked Phil, he said, no way. On the morning of the mission, I told Phil, just stay close on my wing. Tuck it in tight. You will be okay. We will probably abort before we reach the target. No one heard the code word before we dropped our wing tanks and started strafing airfields near Tokyo. Phil was tight on my wing while we strafed our targets and on my wing when we started back toward the B-29 navigation plane. I looked over and gave him a thumbs up and led the flight into some clouds. When we emerged into clear skies, Phil was gone. No radio transmission, no visual contact, just gone. When we landed back on Iwo, we learned that the war had been over for three hours while we were over Japan. In my mind, Phil Schlomberg was the last man killed on a fighter mission over Japan and we may very well have been the last man killed in combat in a war that took the lives of 60 million people. Jerry Yellen, Vero Beach, Florida. I knew 16 young men who were killed during the war. I hated the Japanese all of my adult life. Then I attended a wedding in Japan on March 6, 1988 between the daughter of a Japanese Imperial Air Force veteran and my youngest son, Robert. This wedding between children of former enemies made me rethink not only of my life as a warrior, but the lives of all of us who served in combat. Today I have three grandchildren living in Japan, aged 20, 18, and 13. They love me, I love them. I can't help feeling that all of humanity is the same that the pure purpose of war is to kill, and the pure purpose of life is to connect to all of nature. It is up to the young people of our world to find a way to eliminate war and find a, lay, a way to live in unity with all of humanity, in harmony with all of nature, and find peace for our planet.